tonight, chapter number 12. I want to talk about when iron gates yield. Again, we want to say thank you, everybody, that made donations to the uh, garage yard sale that we had for the junior-senior trip next year. I know a lot of you just donated a lot. Sister Cheryl, Brother Steve, Brother Bill, a lot, and uh, uh, just a number of people. We want to say thank you. Thank you very much. And it was just wonderful. It was successful. And uh, the Bible says, be good especially to those of the household of faith. And I believe in that. You'll see Blake and Anna with us this weekend. Like I said, we're praying that in August there'll be permanent fixtures on one of these pews. Amen. And uh, we might have to do some covert activity, but I believe the Lord will get them here. But let's really pray. I, all uh, selfishness aside, uh, we, we sure do want them to come our way but we want the will of God to be performed let's pray for him because it's not an easy thing to decipher and uh, we we want the will of God for this couple and I know they'll be a blessing wherever they are and it, it doubly especially if it's here so we want them to okay but it's good to have them this weekend praise God Acts chapter 12 <clears throat> Acts chapter 12, verse 1. Now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. And he killed James, the brother of John, with a sword. And because he saw it please the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him. Now you listen to this, strength of slavery. Intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Peter therefore was kept in prison, but... Prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. And when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night Peter was sleeping between two... How can you sleep in a situation like that? Whew. Sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and the keepers before the door... Kept the prison. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and a light shined in the prison, and he smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly. And his chains fell off from his hands. And the angel said unto him, Gird thyself, bind on thy sandals. And so he did. And he saith unto him, Cast thy garment about thee and follow me. And he went out and followed him, and wist not that it was true which was done by the angel, but thought he saw a vision. When they were past the first and the second ward, they came unto the iron gate that leadeth unto the city, which opened to them of his own accord. And they went out and passed on through one street, and forthwith the angel departed from him. Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Father. Help us tonight, God, believe you. God, there's some people in this church, Lord, up against iron gates. But, oh, God, you've opened this one, and I'm asking you and believing you to open up the rest of these, Lord. God, at a time and a season where we feel like there's shackles upon our lives, Lord, loose them. Cause them to fall, Lord. Lord, we thank you for the confirmation of your word and your spirit tonight. We're believing that as a foundation. The Lord, where you just really do the work of completeness and healing bodies, answering prayer, 
saving men and women, Lord, boys and girls, adding to the church and baptizing in the Holy Ghost, healing. But we're believing you to pour out your presence, Lord. We're believing you for renewal and revival at this church, Father. So, Lord, I'm asking you to anoint me to continue to direct toward that. Anoint me to preach tonight and anoint these to have the bearing witness of your spirit to them in a personal way according to the truths of this word, Father. We ask you to do that in Jesus' name. And everybody says with me. That's amazing. He was asleep. In the worst prison in Jerusalem there. That'd take God. Amen? It'd take God. When iron gates yield... This prison, as we well know, was built for the purpose of containing criminals. But in many times it was more than that. It was just to fulfill the selfish purposes of the powers of government in that day. Peter was no criminal. James was not a criminal. This prison housed innocent people. A prison is not meant to house and especially keep those who are innocent. Even though this prison was built well. I, uh, I appreciate areas of containment, don't you? I remember one day as about a nine-year-old boy, we went about 150, 170 miles to visit my uncle who was a pastor of an Assembly of God church in Crowder, Mississippi. And when we got there and we uh, did the greetings and so forth and sat down, he said, Gary, have you ever seen a wolf? And I said, no, sir. And he said, uh, come over here. Come go with me. You. And so me and Dad got in a pickup with Uncle uh, Billy. And we rode over, and a man had uh, trapped a live wolf there in the Delta Forest. And he had built a pen. And uh, he had built it out of a... Two before corners, uh, two before frame with very heavy duty wire. And he had it up on a little uh, dog house. And we pulled up and I saw him. It was a black, gray, motley colored uh, wolf, ugly animal. And being nine years old, uh, sitting in the truck looking at him was good enough for me. But Uncle Billy being the prankster, he wouldn't accept that. We had to get out. And had to walk up to that pen. And the whole time he was adding to the trauma, he was saying, walk easy, boy. Of course, Uncle Billy at that time weighed 370 pounds. He was about six foot three or four. And uh, he's a little fellow. Had big old hands, you know. And he was a, 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 in the Navy, a mean devil. And uh, fought and, and cussed and drank. And beat men unmercifully. But one night God smote him and saved him, baptized him in the Holy Ghost and called him to preach the gospel. As the iron gates yield, friend. Iron gates will yield. We were walking up to that pen and as I began to walk, of course I was walking, leaning back and his hand, big old hand, was kind of, Hey, let's, don't, don't go, you know, at a deep voice. Don't walk up fast, boy. It might scare that. Don't, 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 don't. you know, and he, boy, he had me just shaking, you know, and I didn't want to walk up there in the first place. And we find, boy, and that old thing just sat down. His ears went flat, and he showed, just showed his teeth. Uh, no, boy, was enough for me. I was ready to go. He said, no, let's look at this thing, boy. you never seen a wolf. I want you to know what a wolf looks like. Why, why do you have to know what a wolf looks like to make it in life? And, boy, he had me, Brother Houston, about a foot. From that pen, boy, that old wolf, he was narrowing down. And I got to noticing that wolf had eaten into those two befores trying to escape. And he'd got pretty way almost halfway through on some of them, and that dawned on me. And about that time, Uncle Billy hit that pen and hollered. That wolf exploded, and I did too. 
Man, my, that scared me, and when I went to run, I fell. And, of course, all the thing I heard was him just laughing. He sat down on that pen. That pen was that far from him. He just sat down, and that old dog, was wolf, was snapping at him. He, he didn't care. That was the funniest sight he'd seen in a long time, boy. And that, and that, but I'm going to tell you, that, scared, that hurt my heart. You say that took years off. I don't know how many, but I'd had to have the calculator to add them up at that moment. That, that thing went berserk. And it was just perfect timing because I had seen he had begun to eat into the strength of that containment. You know what happened the next day? Right before dark, that man went out there to feed him, and guess what? He had eaten through those two befores with his teeth and was gone. And here my uncle had me up nose to nose with that thing. I tell you, you know, uh, I, I couldn't imagine an animal chewing wood like that. I'd never been around. You know, the only thing I'd had to contain was chickens. And, you know, we never had a problem them chewing through two befores. <laughs> now, they were hard to drive in where you wanted them, and I'd hit a mini of them in the head with mop stick and thought I'd killed them and all. But I'd never seen anything like that wolf. And uh, when my uncle told me that, he just laughed. He thought that was funny. But that thing broke out of that containment. Next time that man caught a wolf, I'd say he didn't build that cage out of two befores. He learned that, you know, uh, you can't take nature for granted. There's some strong aspects in nature. That, 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 there, there is containment that cannot hold. We see that even in nature. We, we see it in life. I mean, we hear of breakouts from prisons. We hear of army escapes. We, we hear of a lot of things that, that never really should have happened, but it did. But I like reading where some good breakouts take place. I like reading where the innocent are set free, the oppressed are, are set free, the prisoner is, is, is delivered. And, and this is what we're reading here. Now, as we see this, we see that the reason Peter's in the, in the shape he is, he's not just preaching Christ, he's making headway in this gospel. He is life. The anointing on his life. It, it may be not be seen as having a miraculous effects every time that man's preaching, but Christ is using him to build a foundation of which is to come. Amen? The early church has been established, and Peter is being used to continue it in the fashion in which it was established in. <clears throat> now, as I've said many times here before, the enemy does not like to hear things in hell being reported that there are churches that are carrying out the mannerism of the New Testament church in which it was originally established in. Oh, can you say amen to that? <clears throat> I, the, the, the book of Acts never had an ending. Aren't you thankful? They're still being lived out today through the power of the third person of the God. But here we have an innocent man in prison. He's apprehended by the government. Now listen, the ruler here, he's not content with just ordinary means of keeping him in custody. I mean, he didn't send Peter down to the county jail where old Clem's the deputy there, you know, and they, they, they play card games through the bars. It's not like he put him in the interior of the worst jail prison he could find. And, and listen, can you draw some parallels here? The enemy's not content with ordinary means of constraint to people who have a determination that's being burned by fresh touches of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. The enemy hated Paul. Why? He said, my inward man is renewed day by day. Stonings did not change his disposition, his determination. Beatings did not weaken his loyalty. 
hallelujah, when he went on shipwreck, that did not uh, cause him to take a detour in his mission. When that old viper bit him, he just slung it in the fire, continued on, went and had a prayer meeting, healed somebody there on the island of Malta. Praise God. Also, I'm telling you tonight that there are different calibers of people who represent Christianity. And you think, I'm, I'm trying to communicate myself in a civil, uh, uh, ethical manner. But, but all the enemy stirred by a certain group who are determined that the Holy Ghost is going to live through them where he can communicate the person, the power of Christ, no matter what we're going through, when the Holy Ghost says, if you'll continue in obedience and loyalty, there'll come a time that whatever iron gate you are facing, that if you'll stay faithful, the same power that come down out of heaven and open up that iron gate in that prison, the same power is working for you and I. Let's hold on unto God moves on our behalf in like manner. Can you say amen? I mean, he's in the strongest prison in Jerusalem. He is supremely bound. In other words, the emperor and all these soldiers and, and the structuring of the, uh, of the conduct of the prison rules secured the fact that when man enters this place, he's not coming out only if he's escorted by the same prisoners he's bound to. That's what the enemy would tell you. <laughs> Amen. Tonight we want to be reminded that Peter, when he went into the interior of that prison, the Bible tells us he was chained to two soldiers. His left arm was chained to the right arm of a soldier. His right arm was chained to the left arm of a soldier. He had to sleep with that. Right outside that door were two more soldiers. And in the end of that prison, there was two more that guarded the gate. I want to tell you, that man was secured for that season. You ask Peter, how Peter are you going to get out of this? I'm here to tell you, I'll tell you what Peter would have said. He he said, I can't get out of this. I don't see any way of escape. So he said, I'm just going to and go asleep and let the Lord worry about it, okay? And friend, that's the best thing to do is just realize that when God has spoken, uh, Brother Norris, how do you think Peter uh, could go to sleep? I'm going to tell you why. There was already a personal prophecy made to Peter by the voice of the Lord. Uh, you know, I was reminded of it this afternoon as I was studying, but in the book of John, here, chapter 21, verse 18. The Lord Jesus is looking at Peter as a young man. He said, listen to this now. We've got to learn to really hear what God's saying. Sometimes we know he's speaking. I know what he said by the Spirit. But unless we pick up on the details, we don't allow the Lord to quicken our faith in a personal manner. Listen to what Jesus said unto Peter. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, when thou was young, thou girdest thyself and walkest whither thou wouldest. But when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thy hands, and another shall gird thee and carry thee. Listen, do you see what the Lord said here? He said, Peter, when you get old, you're going to be in a weak state. When Peter was in that prison in Acts, he was still a young man. You know why Peter could lay down and go to sleep? Because he heard his Savior proclaim that you're going to arrive at an old age. Don't you see, friend, it's important that we retain a Pentecostal atmosphere at Landmark Tabernacle. I don't know about you, but I need to hear fresh voices of the Lord. I need to hear the gifts of the Spirit in operation. I need, like Brother Meek said, I need for the voice of God to be confirmed to me that if I wait on, help will show up sooner or later. Peter was told by the Lord, you're going to get to be an old man. That's when they put him in prison, Chad. He walked back there. And when he was chained to those two prisoners, brother Doug, he said, I'm going to take off my shoes and his coat. And that's what he did. If he had had pajamas on there, he would have put them on. He laid down for a good night. Why? Because there was a pre-spoken word of God that says my plan is for you to get beyond whatever's trying to stop you. By your this times, so you were healed. We have grounds to stand on that the word of God worked for us in such a heavenly measure that the iron gates that we'll have behind tonight, they can yield under the planning and the power of our Listen, we serve the great liberator. There's 
there's reason to have hope in any situation that that which is retaining us will crumble and we continue through and pass it. I mean, Peter was chained down. Now listen, there were usually 24 soldiers and a quaternion. That means that sometimes that they'd work four in shifts. Sometimes they'd have a minimum of 16. But there was always a space of time where a new sense of restraining strength come in and Peter was attached to it. I mean, those soldiers, they'd get tired too in that prison, Brother Paul. It was a stench to them too. And their morale, Brother Childers, got weakened. But when the soldiers' morale would be weakened, you know what happened? There'd be a new wave of binding strength come in. I know some of you at Landmark, you're going through the same process that that great apostle went through. It seems like that there's an attachment of strength that's holding you behind an iron gate. And there's been times in your life, it looks like that that restraining, oppressive strength would begin to yield under weakness. But all of a sudden, in a matter of days and weeks, what did you find out? There would come a fresh wave of Satan with a new strength of aggressiveness and a sense of accomplishment to the demise of our faith and we'd go through that. It looked like things get better. Some of our loved ones begin to talk about getting saved and we'd think that that iron gate's beginning to weaken and we'd start feeling better in our bodies. We'd start seeing Holy Ghost services but without fail there'd be a new invasion of a new power of hell. Listen, you're not going through anything new. The apostle Peter went through it but I'm here to tell you that emperor could have sent a legion of of a, a soldiers every hour on the hour. But when it got time for Peter to come out of that prison, he was going to come out of that prison. There's going to come a time that the strength of heaven is going to supersede uh, the fresh invigorating power of hell to where they just fall off. Hallelujah! I'm telling you tonight, I'm believing God to get us to the place uh, that iron gates begin to yield to the preference of heaven. I mean, at what Sister Ruth testified tonight, we see it confirmed in the word that iron gate had to yield to the prayer of the church. Let's stand on that ground. There are greater grounds for you and I to enter in and to experience. Don't give up hope in the mouth of two or three witnesses. Let our word be established. Our God reigned us and he's got a plan for each and every one of our lives. I rejoice on this side of victory because I know it's coming. The strong hand of the Lord is upon you and I. The iron gates we have will yield. It looks like hell repeats the structure of its strength many times to our discouragement, Brother Charles. That's what hell's all about. Keeping us discouraged. Sister Shonda, one level more at a time. So when hell comes in with a new sense of strength, you get worse, things get worse. You're living biblical. You have an adversary. And I'm not boasting that I got an adversary, but I'm glad he is my enemy instead of my friend. I'm glad I, I you know, I do things that he don't like, young people. Young men live a life where devil hates you. Amen, young ladies, don't give up on God working for you. You stay faithful. You stay faithful. You're going to come up against iron gates and shackles. And you're going to be like Peter, Brother Norris. There's not a thing I can do to get out of this. And you'll be telling the truth. It's not meant for you to get out of it or your own merit. It's meant for the delivering power of God to show you how marvelous his love is again. Stay faithful. But boy, the scenery was set. These fresh movements of Satan that brought a new sense of strength with discouragement. But to think that James had been killed. The enemy would tell Peter, what grounds do you have to hope that you will have a different move of heaven for you when your brother just died? He's a stinker, isn't he? Now listen to what this is. Some of you, and I'm not trying to be unethical here, but some of you are battling sickness. Now I'm not scaring you. Or I'm not meaning to be. So, Brother Norris, it's hard for me to hope because you know a lot of people die with what I've got. So, 
James died too, but Peter didn't. We don't understand God's ways. But it had just been not very long. He had heard James had his head cut off. Peter was bound to two prisoners and in, uh, uh, two, two soldiers in the interior of that prison. A death sentence was on him too. If God allowed that to happen to a close associate, <clears throat> what hope did he have, Sister Annalia? How could he have faith, Sister Meeks, to pray? The church knew James was dead, but you know what? They didn't say, well, I guess it's just meant for Peter to die with him. The Bible said they gathered. <laughs> just because James had been slain, they wouldn't accept that that was the same allotment of faith for Peter. And Brother Charles, they afraid of fresh and anew for Peter. I know people have died with what you have. And I know some people have went out and met the devil and went to a devil's hell, just like some of our loved ones are doing now. But just because they went down that road of faith does not mean God wants us to believe that it has to happen to us on that fashion. If that would have been the case, Peter would have stayed there. He would have been let out and beheaded like his brother. But it was not not God's will. I don't care what atmosphere God allowed to be shaping up. The atmosphere of one did not dictate the atmosphere of you. What has happened to another is not the same feet of our. What I'm telling you tonight is this. Whatever that word says that we can possess, I'm going to pursue it. I don't care if I'm the only one that finds it. Heaven wants me to hunger after it. Oh, but Brother Norris, it's hard. I know it is. It was so hard for Peter. He was so exhausted. He fell asleep in the peace of God but there were others that were strong enough to intercede on his behalf our church hallelujah let's intercede uh, for our brothers and sisters uh, that's why this preacher says uh, if God wakes you up at night go into that living room and start calling out every sick person in the house of God you think for when you get through praying for them <laughs> pray that God will baptize every young person in the Holy Ghost and fire with the evidence of speaking and read Refill them and refill them and, and refill them. I know a lot of people are winning away. We don't want to go. And guess what? God doesn't either. Let's pray that heaven will answer you and I like he did Peter. Yeah. Brother Norris, I, I've had friends that their children went to hell. Yours don't. Mine don't. Amen. Brother Norris, I've had people, they stayed sick to the rest of their days. They might. You don't have to. <clears throat> the preliminary atmosphere that Satan was allowed to develop does not have to be cast on you. Amen. Call upon me, and I'll show you great and mighty things which you know not of. Do you understand how God works, Brother Norris? In many instances like this, I do not. But I do understand him enough that the merits of one person and the favors of another and the demise of another are not the same things I have to experience. I'm an individual child of God with a new and fresh access to heaven. Let's see what he'll do for us. I know hell revisits with new senses of strength. I know hell is allowed to set up a preliminary atmosphere that can destroy your faith and hoping for your deliverance. That's right. Amen? Difficulties give way to seemingly greater difficulties. But there will come a time that if we continue and abide in obedience, difficulties are going to give way to deliverance. Now they woke him up. I mean, the Bible said the angel had to smite him. Raise both hands up high. I'm teasing. The way it's worded there, he had to come in and hit him on the side. I do that because I got a lot of padding right there. I mean, he sm he had to really. I mean, old Peter was he he was uh, counting sheep, sawing logs, and enjoying it. That old man was in deep slumber. You would envy him. He was sleeping so good. But the angel had to smite him. Pow! Wake up, Peter. Are you married to someone that's a jughead when it comes to sleeping? It takes more than thunder, gunshots to wake them up. Me? Just because she's like that doesn't mean the next child has to be like it. You see what the Lord is saying? 
there's hope that they won't act like their mother. All of them don't have to act like their mother, brother. <laughs> but Peter's shackled. There's a number of aspects leading to his sleep. One was that he remembered. I guarantee the, the, the Holy Ghost prompted that man. You remember though, Peter? Jesus said you was going to get old. Don't you know it quickened him a little bit? I don't know if he cried or he shouted. or when, I, I, I just like to think that when he got ready to go to sleep in whatever language he spoke, he'd look over at so and say, nighty night. Sweet dreams. And <sighs> because God had already spoken. You, you can rest in this word. Uh, this word's not going to pass away. We can take our families to heaven and friends. And you keep taking your sick bodies to the Lord because of it. Because, Jesus, I'm just reminding you, you said by your stripes I'm healed. And you said if I would call for the elders and anoint me with oil and pray the prayer of faith, you'd raise me up. And you said the laying on the hands, uh, 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 they'd be healed. And, Lord, I'm practicing this word, so I'm waiting for this iron gate to come off. Contend with heaven, friend. Contend with him. Prove me. Shake heaven's bars. Don't back now. Hallelujah. He said, seek for me with all your heart. You'll find me. Oh, bless his name. Bless his name. The Bible said he went to sleep. And one reason is he couldn't do nothing about what he was in. But rest in peace until. The Bible said, I don't know what time of night he got there exactly. If Peter knew he was coming, he would have probably had a plan of hope to get there earlier. It's just like you and I. I would have done the same thing. But the Bible teaches us in God's good time. And it's usually unexpected. Peter was woken up by an angel at night. Peter wasn't praying. The groundwork was already being laid. The Bible said the first thing Peter noticed when the angel spoke, his shackles fell off. He said, he said get up, Peter, and put your clothes on. And put your shoes on and follow me. Heaven was leading him beyond. Peter knew that what he had just got out of was a miracle to such astounding. The Bible said he didn't know whether it was real or he was in a vision or dreaming. But the thing they had to get through, the Bible said they got through the first ward and second ward. He got... Evidently, heaven put a slumber on those angels or blinded them or there was some miraculous intervention. Those soldiers didn't even know what was going on. Man. But they come to that big old iron gate. There was no way Peter could open it. <laughs> but the Bible said when they got there, when it was God's own time, brother, Thurman, it opened on itself. If we'll just walk under the prompting that we know to walk under and believe. For he realized that he was wound up at another gate and he was knocking on it and said, Hey, won't y'all let me in? We can't. We're praying for you. I mean, it really shocked them. They were so, you know why? Because no doubt they were praying fervently, but they couldn't get out of their mind. What happened to James? They couldn't get out of mind where he was and what duress and, and, and strain and bondage he was under. Because if they really were expecting it, when they've had the first sign of hope, when that little girl said, Peter's here, they'd have, tore that, they'd have stampeded her. But they said, no, it's going to take some more work now. We just don't feel like faith is... But here he was standing out there. And the Bible said when they saw him, he had to silence them. And said, I just got to tell you what the Lord did for me. You see, friend, there comes a time that testimony, like Sister Ruth and I, that stirred my faith. Amen. Sister Anna tonight talking about this. And, and you know, Sister Sophie and Sister Meeks, all these details and the rest of your testimonies, they, they stirred that, just that little prompting. The Holy Ghost said, yes, yes, uh, uh, yes. Uh, uh, don't let this surprise you. That's your Lord. Hallelujah. I'm telling you tonight, yes, I, I'm not down, downplaying. The enemy comes in with great restraint, seeming 
seemingly unbelievable, impassable, iron gate type of prison life. But oh, we must remember the great liberator, hallelujah, the lion of the tribe of Judah has prevailed and destroyed the works of our enemy. We walk under his victory and there comes a time that if you'll continue to believe according to the word of God, live holy, live right, the power of heaven goes before and makes a way. <coughs> I've been reading that Brother Plymeyer's book again. And boy, it's really, it's really kind of restirred me. <coughs> Iron gates. We can't see things get in. We can't get out. What do we do? We stay faithful. When you've done all the stand and you can't go any further, hold your ground. It's imperative we not allow the re-strengthening of Satan in a fresh way to discourage us. It's imperative you control your thinking, not what has happened in a derogatory way to good people, but what needs to happen to you as his child. Don't judge the potential of heaven by the fate of others. Believe God. Believe God. Brother Plymeyer, there in Tibet, great Buddhist nation. What I mean by great is, it's prevalent, predominant at this time in the early 1900s. He knew God wanted him to witness to these Buddhist people. And God had laid on his heart that if he could get to the priest, the priest would give him permission to come into these villages and these monasteries and pass out gospel literature. When he conveyed this to people, they said, that's not God. You're not going to get in there and get favor with these Buddhist priests as a foreigner, as a Christian. I mean, we're their arch enemy. But, but, and they gave him statistics that, that other missionaries had come in and they had been run off, they had been beaten, they had been killed, made to leave. It would be easy to accept that communication based on past factual evidence that in this area there's always been restriction. I mean, the people telling him we're good people. They had beat other missionaries. They had killed them. They had run them out of the country. But God had laid on Brother Plymeyer, Go! Believe! So him and his friend got together and they walked up to this monastery, which was not one of the smallest, but as far as chain of command, one of the next, well, about the next level, they would be like in the Dalai Lama's presence in that main Buddhist monastery in Tibet, you know, in the highest chain of authority. And he went up to this monastery. And the gates opened, and he said they beckoned him in with smiles. The devil whispered, they're going to kill you. That... That would kind of check your next step, wouldn't it? I could see myself going, ooh, I'll just. Shh. Let me think this over, guys. Wait just a minute. <clears throat> you know, the casting of sheep right before birth. Like we preached this morning. But the story goes the same. Brother Plymeyer just walked in there. And he had an old scarf, which is a symbolism. If you extended this scarf and. The, the man of Tibet would receive it, then you were his friend. So here he was walking down this same road into this same little street leading up to this throne to where this uh, one of the main priests of that nation resided. And he was going to ask him to pass out tracts. A herald went on before him and got to the main priest and said, here's what's up, Can let him in. And to their amazement, the main priest said, yes, I would like to talk with him. Brother Plymeyer went in. He told him the story of Christ. He said, has any man ever told you this? He said, no, you're the first one. He says, why don't you pass all this literature out to all of these priests of mine? And there Victor Plymeyer was in a Buddhist temple, permission by the high priest to pass out that Jesus Christ is the only way to salvation. <laughs> oh, do you believe to him that believeth, all things are possible. Amen. 
the story set on, they become friends. He went on, the time was up, he went on and did this work here and there. But the Lord laid on his heart to go to the main Dalai Lama place, to where the main Buddhists of Tibet live, the main priest. Of course, when the Lord started talking that, the enemy started talking about impassable restrictions. People have been murdered. You're not going to get past the first uh, 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 restriction. And he told him all of this that would happen. He's li I want to tell you, you've got an adversary that knows how to speak to your mind. Amen. Why go I mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? Because he doesn't want us getting to the place that God produces fruit and we reap what we sow. Satan knows that you and I, if we stay consistent, God will uphold the character of that word. We'll reap what we sow. You can't change that fact when we meet the conditions of that demand. Before they got to the main, and I'm closing with this. They're doubting disbelief all over your face. I don't blame you. If I was sitting there, I'd kind of be doubting me too, but. I'm going to try to close with this story. He went down to the inn that was the last hotel, if I want to call it that, before they went over this little plateau and there the main monastery was a huge place. Inside of some of the temples there was laid with solid gold, Brother Jeff, up and down, just solid gold. Wealth unbelievable all in it. They said, Brother Plymeyer and this man, they crawled up, they spied the land out, you know, they crawled up his mountain. They looked and saw what was before them. Before they got to the inn, people had come out. Said, you not be able to get in there. Said, well, we're going to try. Next day they got up and they began to approach. Before they got close to it, the, the gates opened up. And aggressive, militant men run out with huge clubs and run them off. And said, if they come back, they'd get some of that. So they went back to the inn. Now, faith is put on some shaky ground sometimes. How many times are we going to retry it? Amen. The story went on to say that Brother Plymeyer went off, but God kept dealing with him. Go back. Can you imagine this now? That would be like if you was I going to door to door, door to door. All of a sudden, the door yanked open. Here comes a man about six foot seven, four hundred eighteen, eleven dozen pounds. Got tattoos all over. Don't have any teeth. And you see the devil in his eyes. He pulls a three foot. If you get on my property, you know, I'll blow your brains out. And you think I believe he'll do it. He lets his pit bulls loose. You hear gunfire in the air. You don't turn around and see if you hit. You keep running. You get down the road. You thank God for deliverance. That night he wakes you up at 2.30 and says, I want you to go back the next day. You're thinking, oh, God. No, I ain't going back to sleep after that. But this is like Brother Plymeyer. So he goes back to the end. These people hear that he's there, and they come and surround the inn. The innkeeper won't let him, but they tell him if they approach that gate, it's going to be bad news. Brother Plymeyer is there trying to eat something, and he finds out that the innkeeper is a friend of the high priest. There comes a time where you start hearing and seeing something good. I'm not being a smart aleck. What Sister Ruth told us tonight is God communicating that not just as one person blessed, but that testimony blesses us for what the iron gate you are up against. If he'll do that for brother and sister, Charles and sister Ruth, he'll do something for you. Listen, he told Peter, when you get old, I heard that lady said, God brought down my iron fence in this thing. You know what it did to me? I thought, ooh, that's a little exciting, ain't it? Hallelujah. I believe in revival, friend. I believe in renewal. Amen. Brother Plymeyer said, could you talk to him for me? He said, I'll try. He went and talked to him. The innkeeper come back escorted by two huge soldiers dressed royally. Now if I'd been Brother Plymeyer, if I'd have saw him coming, I think I would have hid until I could understand, are they friend or foe? They come back. 
And they told Brother Plymeyer, he'll see you. That sounds, whoo, boy, I bet he shouted. No, I don't know. Is this an ambush? I mean, it's just sticky all the way to the end. Right? You think the devil's going to give up until we have revival? He's not going to give up during revival. So let's just go ahead and have revival. And believe God for a sovereign move of people being saved. Why shouldn't we? That's what that word says. They were escorting Brother Plymeyer and his friends. I can just hear them devils. They're going to get you good now. They're going to cut you into so many pieces. A buzzer's going to eat every ounce of you. You're an idiot. Can you imagine the fear? Before they got there, the gates opened up, and he walked right by the men that said, we're going to kill you. Walked right by them. But he was beginning to feel God. I wonder if he stuck his tongue out at him when he went by. (laughs) He was ushered right into the main temple. They said, this man will meet you, which meant he's the second priest in line of our nation. And all of a sudden, way down, Brother Stephen, that temple, he saw a man come out, a big man. He walked with a slow, de- deliberate gait, dressed in royalty. And he come up and sat down, the servant took his shoes off, and he squatted down. And Brother Palmer, Palmer got to looking. He thought, I know that man. And he got to feeling good because you know who that man was? It was the priest that a way while back he had befriended in one of those lesser monasteries that gave him the full reign to all of that. It was him. And you tell me God's not working for you right now to open up this iron gate. He didn't know it, Brother Duffy. God's already been working. Man. Little handful. Do you remember ever receiving handfuls on purposes? That is not for that moment only, but it's a projection for the future of better things to come. And he walked up, and with a little smile, he extended that old scarf. And that old priest began to smile and took it. Oh, I, used, I, just, I like stuff like that. I get patriotic and spiritual and every good thing. I want to cry, shout, reap, and holler. And, mm, it just does something to me. The Holy Ghost just begins to express realities. That, you know, that's why we run sometimes. The Holy Ghost gets to express, and you get to experience in reality. You just can't stay still. I get to studying it, and I've, I've jumped up and hit my knee on my desk thinking, oh, boy, that's, that's good, Lord. Woo, praise God. <laughs> you know, the Holy Ghost quicken you like that. You just, you know God's got a sense of humor. i tell you a sense of humor deal right now. I'm not little God, but I was down here praying and said, Lord, in that battling discouragement like some of you know, not seeing people say, Lord, I, I need a sign. I need a, Lord, just let me see something. And I, I walked out, and you want, you want me to tell you the first thing I saw? I looked up, and a buzzard was flying over this church. I promise. Walked right out those. Looked up. And here come a big, a big old buzzard just floating. Oh, I thought. Then it hit me. I, you know, I wonder if God was kind of. I hope he was. <laughs> I could just see God up there, you know, in his expression. I thought, okay. But I started looking for something besides a buzzard, and I never did see it, you know. <laughs> Brother Plymeyer, he began to talk with him. He said, are you the high priest of the, of the country? No, I, I, I'm the, he communicated second in line. Sort of, but I know him. He said, could you talk to him for me? He said, I will. Now here is the top iron gate of the Buddhist foundation. And a Holy Ghost filled man has been ushered to the interior core of it. Paul preached to Caesar for him. Before he got there, he was beaten he was shipwrecked, John. He was stoned. Yes. He was bitten by a poisonous viper. Yes. Mm-hmm. He was left for dead. Continuous reinvasions of fresh strengths of Satan. But Paul made up his mind. He said, I'm going to Rome. I'm going to Rome. Mm-hmm. 
And that's a determination you've got. You cannot take no for an answer regardless of the instrumentation of the enemy weaken your faith. I believe you can raise these kids to where not only they stay saved, they stay full of the Holy Ghost. They become pillars of the church. They shout, they pray, they fast. And we have generational Pentecost and it keeps the enemy discouraged. Hallelujah. Priest left and he come back and said, Old great friend, he'll see you. Good thing he took along another scarf. Huh? So here, Brother Meeks, listen to me now. Here's the main man of the Buddhist gang. He could say, Cut his head off. Everybody in that temple would have helped. But Brother Cletus, Brother Pymire was walking under a different authority. I want to tell you, I'm not, you know I'm not a mystic. I guarantee you, angels had sat down all over that monastery. I guarantee you, they had their swords on. It was D-Day. <laughs> There's a day of deliverance. The main man come out, Brother Plymer extended him the cordial scarf. And all of a sudden, that man just stared at him. That would have been a tense moment. The last attempt to cast down. But all of a sudden he said, the main Buddhist man of the nation smiled and received it. And you know what he told Brother Plymire? I want to read your literature, and you've got ten days to pass out your literature all over this monastery. I'm just telling you. God will open the door and no man can shut it. He opened the door at Calvary and said, I come to seek and to save that which is lost. He opened up the door of Calvary and he said, by my stripes ye were healed. I don't read, Brother Doug, where anybody's closed that chapter of that provision. He opened up the door at Calvary where he said, my peace I leave with you. He opened up the door of Calvary. He said, if you can have faith as a grain, uh, as a mustard seed, he said, you, if you just keep it possessed, he said, there'll come a time heaven will come down for you in mountains, hallelujah, because of that constant living faith will move. I'm just telling you we as Pentecostal believers that, that's living a Bible holiness life, we ought to expect somewhere down the road uh, for God to begin to give fruit uh, in a barren season. Can you say amen? We ought to be able to expect the God of Peter that touched down in Jerusalem by sending an angel. We ought to expect the same angel that opened up those shackles and opened up that iron gate and escorted him down the road. The same God ought to be able to come to matter of fact I want to tell you he's already beginning to work can you say amen Victor Plymire did not know that the priest he had already befriended months and months and months back God was going to cause him to be put in the next level of heavenly activity and I'm here to tell you hallelujah the road's already been paved you and I've just got to stay on it till we come to the end to where heaven writes the conclusion I don't think you and I'll ever regret it but I think we'll be overjoyed that the power of heaven has caused our iron gate to yield and brings about an arena of deliverance that we all are affected by in a great measure stand with me stand with me I'm here telling you by your will stay steadfast brother Thurman we've got to go past feelings don't we brother We've got to say, it don't matter about my feelings. It matters about this word. I'm going to stand on this word. And I'm here to tell you, if we're laying the groundwork of prayer like we should, I, I, I'm just silly and foolish enough to believe this. Brother North says, immature, that's shallow. Well, maybe it's not. Maybe it's just childlike faith. Maybe it's not my letting my mind wander into the complexities of theology, which would discourage the zeal of heaven in my life. We could go study books. And I'm not downplaying education. I, I've been educated a little bit. Uh, I could be a lot more. And I don't, but I'm just saying, sometimes if we're not careful, our old flesh can work against the zeal and childlike faith that we need. To, I'm not putting a premium on it. 
ignorance either, but I'm here to tell you, I just, I just like to stay at a state that when I read that in his word, I don't let any avenue of discouragement try to take it away from, I don't want higher criticism to tell me we can't see deliverance. Can you say, I don't want higher criticism to tell me that God doesn't demand we live a biblical life. I'd just rather read the, rather read the pre-spoken word of God and say it was good enough for the apostles. That's the way he said it. Ain't nothing wrong with living it. Matter of fact, I'm going to get to the place I'm going to look my iron gate eyeball to eyeball and it's going to open up. Hallelujah. I'm encouraging you. Ask. You'll receive. Seek. You'll find. Knock. It, it shall be open. That's to the children of God. Don't back down from it. Live on till you experience it, brothers. Attack after attack will come to us, Brother Wade. I mean, moms, <clears throat> the devil's going to attack our children. Don't let it make you lose sleep. We're, I've already taught, preached to you about how keep laying the groundwork for trouble that is to come. Be found in prayer. Oh, let us have a little talk with Jesus. Let us tell him all about our troubles. He'll hear us and answer us. But tonight... Are you wearied by your iron gate? Is the devil telling you factual communications backed up with evidence? Other people your age have died. Oh, younger, listen, I've got younger people than I died. There's been greater people never saw their loved ones saved. Have you heard such trash as this? Have you ever had Christians, oh, God forbid that I'm not getting in prickly pear situations now. Have you ever had Christians come and try to reason you out of your fervency of faith to believe God to heal or save? In other words, trying to calm you, getting you ready as if it's not going to happen. I'm not saying don't accept wisdom. I'm just telling you don't back down. Believe God. Be wise and believe God. They're both compatible companions. Hallelujah. I've had iron gates move on my life. You've had iron gates. Listen, I'm, I'm being, Sister, Sister Rudin, Brother Charles has had an iron gate answer. Well, <laughs> walk on through. I don't know, I could scream. I could run. I wish I had four of me so I could run all four directions, east, north, south, and west. I just feel like it, so I guess I can't do nothing. I... I'm just telling you, church, there's a God in heaven specializes in iron gates. I know the enemy is continually distributing towards you methods of attack beating on your faith. But I'm just fool enough to believe that this church is going to have revival and renewal. People are going to be saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. We're going to have to knock that wall out and extend uh, this area for others coming in to be saved full of the Holy Ghost. You know why? This Bible. I'm looking beyond my lack of ability. I'm looking beyond weaknesses. I'm looking to the author and finisher of our faith. Jesus said, I'll build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail. Look beyond your iron gate. Don't be discouraged. Walk with him. Meet with him while the dew is still on the roses. Why don't you raise your hand and start thanking him already that one day he's going to open up your iron gate. Young people, don't be discouraged. Don't get aggravated at Brother Norris. Don't get aggravated at the way of this church. Fall in love again with the ways of Christ. Hallelujah. Mom and dad, don't take any other avenue but belief in the ability of the Lord Jesus Christ who loved us and gave himself for us. Iron gates, we believe that they yield. Iron gates, come on, that's right, pray. That's right, believe, church, all over this building. If you say, Brother Norris, I just feel a special prompting of the Holy Ghost and, and I just want to respond to it. This might sound silly, but I want you to get out of your pew and walk down to this altar. In other words, you're, you're, you're saying to God, I'm recognizing this prompting. Lord, I know you're stirring me to hope. You're stirring me to a continual commitment that what you have begun, you will perform. If he's promised it, he's able to perform it. That's right, come on in the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. What about it? Some of you, God, been stirring your heart. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, <laughs> come on down here and talk to the one that really can do something about it, who's been pouring out handfuls of purpose to keep you going. That's right, young people. God, I believe we got some of the most wonderful young people in this world. Mom and Dad, is God prompting you? Oh, just let's find us a place to pray tonight. Don't leave here without talking to the Lord, friend. If you're here tonight and you're cold, I'm encouraging you. Cry out to God and ask Him to restore your soul, friend. That's right, just cry. If you're here tonight and you say, Brother Norris, I'm not right with God, call out on this merciful Savior who will forgive you, amen, and cleanse you. That's right, let's believe. Let's pave the way right now. That's right, open up your heart. Young people, raise them hands to a God that will not fail you. That's right, young men, what a Savior. Young ladies, mom and dad, what a Savior. When iron gates yield, what a Savior, what a Savior, what a Savior. Come on, let's pray, Turn, Raise your voice. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I find victory, real victory when I kneel at the cross, lost in the beauty of His holiness there.
Street. 
help me tonight. I know the Lord will make a way for me. Thank you, Lord. I know the Lord will make a way for me. If I live the holy life, shun the wrong and do the right, I know the Lord make a way. Yes, I know the Lord has laid His hand on me. I know the Lord has laid His hand on me. If I live the holy life, shun the wrong and do the right, I know the Lord has laid His hand on me. I wonder if somebody tonight would like special prayer. Anybody tonight you'd like to be anointed with oil and prayed for before we leave and dismiss? I'll give you that opportunity if you'd like to take advantage of it. Anybody? Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. What a Savior. Just anybody else, just come up here to the front and We'll get to you. Sisters, come help us pray. And let's all over the church.